Embryonic Stem Cell Research, What the Science Really Says, with Sean Morrison, Director of the University of Michigan Center for Stem Cell Biology. Where do embryonic stem cells come from? Couples that have fertility problems get the help of a fertility clinic, where sperm and egg are mixed together in a dish to create embryos. But not every embryo develops normally, and not every embryo can create a successful pregnancy. So the doctors watch the embryos develop for a few days, generally five days, in a dish before selecting the healthiest embryos to try to implant into the patient. There's another subset of, em of embryos that don't develop normally and are immediately discarded. There's a third subset of embryos that's frozen down in case the patient wants to come back and try again. But both the embryos that are frozen down and the embryos that are immediately thrown away, all of these embryos can be used to derive new embryonic stem cell lines once the patients decide they no longer want to use those embryos for fertility treatment. All we're talking about is taking the embryos that are currently thrown away by fertility clinics and using them to try to help patients. What is done now with leftover embryos at fertility clinics? Parents have the choice of either using all the embryos themselves for fertility treatment or making those embryos available to other infertile couples to use or destroying the embryos that they cannot use for fertility treatment or donating leftover embryos that can't be used for fertility treatment for medical research. In most states within the country, parents have all of those choices, but in the state of Michigan, parents don't have the option of donating for medical research embryos that they've decided that they cannot use for fertility treatment. And this is why so many people have described embryonic stem cell research as a pro-life approach. People like Orrin Hatch, John McCain, people with perfect pro-life voting records. Because the fact is that right now, for a variety of reasons, there are thousands of embryos that are routinely discarded by fertility clinics that cannot be used for fertility treatment. But we could use those, embryonic, those embryos to drive embryonic stem cell lines that could give hope to thousands of Americans. Is embryonic stem cell research a political fight between parties? There's a reason why there's broad bipartisan support for embryonic stem cell research federally and why most states allow research that's not allowed in the state of Michigan. And that's because fertility clinics routinely throw away thousands of embryos that can't be used for fertility treatment for various reasons. Why not use the federally approved lines of embryonic stem cells instead of creating more? None of those federally approved lines carry genetic defects that allow us to model human disease. So this is a very good example of how the lines approved by the federal government really don't allow scientists to do all of the important research that they would like to do and why other states have made the decision that it is so important to allow scientists to derive new lines to study disease that states like California and New York and Massachusetts and New Jersey and Maryland and Wisconsin and Illinois all, are all states that have made the decision to actively fund this research within their states. When will we see the first therapies from embryonic stem cell research? It's hard to know. We're at an early stage of this endeavor. And historically, if we've learned anything, it's that we're not very good at predicting in advance which cells are going to be most useful for which purposes. The reason why scientists are so excited about embryonic stem cell research is that this research offers possibilities that don't exist otherwise for potentially curing incurable diseases. The, the diseases that are at the top of the list um, for things that we might think could be treated effectively with embryonic stem cells are things like juvenile diabetes, where we know it's possible to treat that disease by replacing the insulin-secreting cells that are lost from the pancreas of those children. And the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation believes that embryonic stem cell research represents the best hope for a cure for their children. Now, there's other approaches as well, and as scientists, we really want to be able to use all of the weapons at our disposal to study disease, so that no matter where the cures come from, that we'll be able to, to derive them. How is embryonic stem cell research pro-life? Most people in our society believe that 
in vitro fertilization is a pro-life, life-giving practice. There's probably on the order of half a million children that have been born in this country over the past 30 years as a result of in vitro fertilization. So it is true that there are some people in our society who believe that in vitro fertilization is wrong, but most people in our society believe that this is a life-affirming practice and that it's a mainstream fertility practice. Uh, unfortunately, not every embryo that's created during in vitro fertilization can be used for fertility treatment, either because they fail to develop normally and doctors are unwilling to implant them in a patient, or because the parents uh, elect to discard embryos that they can no longer use for fertility treatment. In both of those cases, we can derive embryonic stem cell lines that might one day help patients. And most people in our society believe that that is a pro-life practice.